Greetings, everybody. Rodaman here. Thanks for tuning in to Stationer's Venus episode 43, which originally aired live on Twitch. Everyone vote for my idea because it's the best way, even though I insulted everyone. Hey! If that's how to get people voting for your idea, and it works, it works. All right, so I'm just going to risk running the water through the ceiling here. Um, where, yeah, it might heat up, but hopefully it won't heat up too bad. And then once it passes through the airlock, it drops down uh, to this level. Like that. And I'll probably do the same thing for the carbon dioxide. Or actually, I definitely do the same thing for the carbon dioxide. Which means I'm going to raise this water up to this level. So it will run like that. So we'll have pipes mostly inside the, uh, the temperature control hallways. Mostly. Not entirely, but mostly. All right, let me lay out the uh, CO2 lines. Same deal. Oh, except for the stupid gas sensors in the way. Uh, all right, well, that gas sensor is obviously going to move. Now, the pipes, these CO2 pipes that just ran through, I can replace them with um, insulated ones, and that solves that problem, so I probably will do that, even though I just laid them down. I'm going to be removing them. But there's that pipe, and let's fix this now. Because there's... Oh, and voting. Oh, blip, 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 blip. Gas sensor. Oh, I need to cut the stupid ceiling. Nothing like some good old home improvements. There we go. So, there's a lot going on behind the walls. Uh, oh, eh, nope, I wasn't done. Because now this whole section should become insulated piping that's gray. Uh, just, to, just to mitigate all risk of this CO2 that are in these pipes uh, becoming the wrong temperature. So one, two, how many is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven insulator pipes. All right, we'll get that made. And this song sucks. And I can do something about it. The maintenance tunnel pipe, you like it? Looks hell as cool, even if it's an aesthetic loss. I really like sort of the industrial feel of everything. I don't like hiding everything behind panels and everything because it makes it very, very difficult to um, maintain. And then you sort of lose the sense that you built something, right? Oh God, I let me turn off the, uh, that. 
tank and chamber. So the chamber is significantly hotter than the tank now. Oh, but you know what it is? It's because the tank is so dang pressurized uh, that it's very, very, very difficult for um, it to change in temp. So it's it's having an equalization problem or something. Uh, okay, insulated pipes. So I have three and gray. And I thought I said I needed... Oh, that's not it. Seven. Uh, I need to be on the pipe bender. All right. Steel silicon. Back to the strange music. Turning on the sippers so I can sip some nitro. I don't, uh, you know what? I am actually going to babysit this for a sec. And where is my carbon dioxide filter? Yep, I have no idea. I, I put it in the vending machine. I, I actually do remember doing that. top of our carbon dioxide because obviously we're about to fill a farm with it. And uh, we'll babysit this so it doesn't go boom. Speaking of boom, repellent. So the way this is working is it's pulling air from outside through this uh, through a vent that's there and that gets filtered through uh my system oh i keep hitting things oh i need oxygen filters ish that's filtering through uh all my filters and uh and you know getting stored but because co2 pressurizes really really fast i have to be cautious about over pressurizing co2 because these are just portable tanks that like to blow up if you're not cautious and it's daytime so never mind stay there filter how do i fix the pressure of my air filter uh no it's not even fixed uh what was normally building up was my propellant tanks and these propellant tanks now have a pressure reader to to keep it within a certain tolerance. Um, but the carbon dioxide tank could definitely explode. There's nothing stopping that. I could fail safe the system a lot better, but if I was going to do that, I would be using... I'd probably set it up for um, kit tanks, not portable tanks, and, um, you know, for, you know, heavier filters and in parallel and all that. There is a lot of changes to be done, and it's one of these things like, yeah, I'm, it would be nice to have, and I'm, I'm can definitively tell you that until it becomes a central project for me, I'm not doing it. The TLDR is, you can suggest whatever you want, but I'm only one man working one project at a time, so chances are it ain't gonna be done till 
that becomes the focus. So there we have the uh, the insulated piping, uh, which does not exist for liquid, which is unfortunate. Um, we're going to be doing the radiators. So I'm going to close this down. The radiator setup. Um, so the radiator setup will look uh, will look interesting, and I'm going to need a lot more insulated pipes for that. But um, let's run carbon dioxide. Oof. There was a bit of a flow. So let's finish off that carbon dioxide uh, tube. Still going strong. Yep. I'll finish at the top of the hour, so 45 more minutes. I meant to finish at the top of this hour, but I overshot it considerably. <laughs> As is tradition. Posture check five minutes ago. Sorry, us. I did miss that. And my posture was terrible. Spin! Generate power! I'm not using this, so let's turn this off. All right, so then the trick is how am I going to run carbon dioxide over there? I think, I think, I think I'm actually going to move my water line. I don't know. I have to figure this out. This water line can actually move moved a little bit uh, because I want to connect it up top. Whoop, that's not my wrench. And then that means that this be ideal if I had it here, but I think that dips into my, um, my vacuum room. So what about there? It makes this room very, very, very strange and very industrial looking, but I mean, I don't, I don't really mind. Obviously, I don't want it to physically connect just yet because the other side of that pipe is hot. Hot Venus temp. So where's that get me? That brings this here. Now that probably can't be there because it will bump right into the, uh, yep. So instead, let's have it come towards me. And then down. Oh, there's getting blocked by something. Uh, probably the light. Hey, round light, are you in the way? <laughs> yep. Just a little bit. find somewhere else for that in a bit. Pipe comes first. So 
So this line is to replenish the atmospheric CO2 that the plants are going to want and need. And I shouldn't turn it yet. Because it needs to go around purple. Okay. Let's print up some more pipes. That can do a full reach. And figure out where the light is going to go. I guess I could have the light just be one closer to the wall. Like this. Genius fix! Not really. Pipes are having fun, aren't they? Going everywhere. work towards it now so off of this line this is my co2 line it's gray this will run like this I have to make sure not to intersect any other gas line because it would uh, that would be a real problem because it would pollute cross-contaminate and screw me rightly. There we are. One of the hidden advantages of this is it will be a lot more difficult to overpressurize my CO2 line now. Oh, that's my network analyzer. Because I've added considerable volume. If we take a look here, uh, as you can see, the, the tank and the pipes now share volume. Um, so my CO2 has more capacity. So when I go for uh, sipping Atmo gas, uh, there's just a lot more that I can sip before it's overpressurized. Forest floor starting to feel a little bit claustrophobic? Not to me. This feels like a base well lived in. Plus I can, I can walk around and, you know, as long as I'm not jumping, I'm not hitting my head on anything. Um, so... The coolant line, the the um, volume pump based coolant line. There must be more uh, cables blown out because things aren't charging as fast as I'd expect them to charge. So let me go outside and figure out uh, what's going on with their power situation. Claustrophobic is a funny way of saying cozy. Yeah, I mean, to each their own, right? I feel like it's cozy, and um, it harkens to me to like the sci-fi. Uh, I feel like the sci-fi space pirate ships and the stuff like that, like um, Serenity and the like, where everything is compact and and you know. No, it looks like everything is connected. Ah, uh, no, it isn't. Damn, that storm really, uh, did a number. Can you imagine how annoying this would be if it was all buried? Fifty-two devices, yeah, sounds about right. It should all read fifty-two at any point. Yep, okay. So, now we're back to actually being plugged in. Which is good. 
because uh, we weren't, and that was bad. Now, as you can see, this is a much bigger farm than it used to be. But this is essentially what the tray looks like. Just to show you. I'll put the other tray down, because I don't need it in my inventory. And it has its own grow light, which is up here. And you supply water and power. And it has to be in an, uh, a plant-friendly, uh, you know, environment. Uh, I'll keep that in my inventory just in case of storms. I don't want to have to make another one. Okay, so the next part is the uh, the volume-based um, coolant lines. The volume pump-based coolant lines. So for that, I'm going to need a bunch of insulator pipes. Because basically, I need the coolers... I think what I'm going to want to do is a portable scrubber to just scrub out the non-carbon dioxide and just cool the atmosphere as is. That way my windows don't implode. Um, so this is my portal air scrubber. I'm going to save before it farts on me because it could just fart on me. Been a really, really, really annoying bug. Oh, uh, no farting. Do I have a... I don't have a volume pump, actually. Oh, no, I do. I have a volume pump that actually pulls everything out to zero. Wow, I'm smart. All right, awesome. So I'm going to use this portable air scrubber uh, to scrub the unwanted uh, gases that are in the um, the new greenhouse, so that we can make it pure carbon dioxide. Thunk. Oh, well, our pollutant filter there is uh it's about at the end of its life oh uh i have to remind myself what is uh in venus atmo it is n2 and x okay so i want to be scrubbing n2 and x so here's my X filter, and this can go away. I need a nitrogen filter. And let me sip nitrogen, speaking of which. All right, so X and N2. Uh, sometimes the portable scrubber does release gases back into the room. It's a bug. It's an unattended bug. But to say it doesn't would be uh, incorrect. Because it, it, it does. <laughs> and it has, to me, a lot. A lot. <laughs> uh, it's a bug I particularly hate. All right, I'm going to stay in the base to wait around for... Actually, I will... Um... I'll stick these filters into the trader so they're not just sitting here. And then go back in and uh, and turn off the uh, CO2 sipper. Such peaceful music. In before base explodes. Right, Husky? Right? Yeah. I actually don't have anything to hydrate on, so I will get something shortly. 
If I turn down my first set of transformers by like 150, you think it won't blow? I could try that. Whoa, that was weird. Why was it getting heat lines in here? Oh wow, the uh, okay. I can leave the CO2 a lot longer because of the amount of volume that I have capacity for. I know there's no pet tusk, I'm sorry. I'll pet her anyway. She's a good puppy. All right, let me quickly get something to drink. Um, while I am AFK, I'm gonna have you guys stare at the carbon dioxide pressure knowing that there's literally nothing you could do about stopping it from overpressurizing. Be right back. We haven't blown up. All right, my nitrogen is fine. Carbon dioxide is fine. Cool. I'm gonna have to remember that there's a carbon dioxide filter in there. Um, I was working on, yeah, so let's go ahead and add um, insulated pipes when you're gonna need a whole lot of these for the vacuum system because the the piping uh, is gonna be external to the base yeah you're patiently waiting awaiting impending doom I'm not gonna doom y'all you're, you're all okay oh Hey, random pipe, I missed you. Well, you are gonna be gray now. What color was my vacuum? Uh, what color is my X? My X is yellow, but yellow? Yeah, okay. So if my X is yellow, um, actually this pipe should have been yellow. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I'll paint it. Hey, Furnace, how are you doing? What temperature are you? Hot. Wonderful. Now, I don't know exactly how many I'm gonna need, but uh, I'm not gonna go overboard, so. Next step is to get into the vacuum room and start to set up uh, a way for the pipe to exit the walls. Eat it, dude. Eat it. Eat it. So picky. Now we're eating cashews. The usual, the usual late night snack. He's a bit skeptical of whether it's food or not though, as you've probably seen. All right, so here's my vacuum room. Coldest place in the base.
Husky, however, likes cashews, as you can see. Look. Show what? Speak. Show what? I want to hear you bark. You want the cashew? You got to speak. Show what? Show what? Show what? Come on. They need to hear you. Show what? Thank you. Here you go. <laughs> so here's my uh, my coolant vacuum room. Um. Uh, let's see. We're gonna just stick a pipe out the wall like this. Yeah, that was a very very poor Mandarin. I'm not even speaking the correct tones. It should be shuhua, not shuhua, but I'm lazy, so, you know, whatever. Uh, all right, coolant is cool. Surprised to no one. Coolant is cool. Okay, so the coolant goes out of the base so that we can use it in our volume pump setup. And yeah, uh, she's bilingual, the dog. Like, uh, ni hao. Ni hao. Or, greet. No, greet. Ni hao. Good girl. Alright, so here's the coolant line. Looks like a pimple on my base. Because, you know, it's what it is. Um... And I'm gonna put the radiator's input in here. This will be my radiator, imp radiator input port. So, in this spot here, we're gonna have a volume pump, or, whoa! Come on, I'm working here. The, the bait, the wind current just like blew me into the, I can't even get out, I can't even get out. Ah, there we go. So, in this spot here, I'm going to have a volume pump. So, here is where it's going to continue. Ah, it keeps shoving me into the stupid pressure differential. And yes, this does mean I'm going to have, like, weird freaking piping everywhere, but I don't... It doesn't... Well, you know, maybe, maybe I, I should have it hug the base a little cleaner. I'll do that. So if we analyze this pipe, it should still be like negative 18 C X. And it is still negative 18 C X because these insulated uh, pipes here are not um, leaking heat. They're not bleeding heat. And then um, then the idea is we'll have on the inside here uh, regular uh, pipes with radiators to radiate the cool X into the room here and maybe it will be on this wall uh, that faces I don't know whatever that faces and then when we are too cold we want it to bleed back so we'll have a pipe here with a volume pump here that puts the air back into the uh, the cooling network. Oh my god. Cannot stop getting jostled around by the air currents. So, how many more pipes do I need? I need, uh, I don't know, like eight or so. Yeah, I'm being thrown about because of the pressure differences. Basically, my jetpack is creating a, 
a, a, a cold cloud that um, creates a, a localized pocket of lower pressure, which keeps shifting me around like crazy. And, um, Os, that hydrate. Not that it's, you know, 10 minutes overdue or anything. But I'll double hydrate. Do anything game too. Dump the waste tank. Dump the ox tank. Switch my batteries around. Uh, I remember that posture check. All right, some more uh, insulated pipes. And then we're gonna need two volume pumps and a little bit of uh, IC logic to be able to turn the volume pumps on and off when uh, we want cooling and when we don't. So the idea is if we don't want cooling, uh, the volume pumps, the, the intake turns off, the output turns on and it pulls all the air out of the radiators so that the radiators aren't filled with anything and therefore they don't cool us down. And when we want air, um, all we have to do is turn the intakes on. Um, so really all that, really, we could even do it with a digital valve and one volume pump. Yeah, let's do it with a digital valve and one volume pump. So, um, a digital valve, copper, oh, it costs invar. But, but it's cleaner to do it with a digital valve, so I'm gonna do it with a digital valve. And I just like to say digital valve, digital valve, digital valve. Um, I should do, yeah. So we'll do it with a digital valve. So, <clears throat> the volume pump will trigger when we wanna empty it, and the visual digital valve will turn off. Um, It'll work, it'll work the same way. We only really need one volume pump when we want to pull stuff out. We are in bar rich, that's true. And also, it's very rare to use digital valve, so it's pretty cool to do it. So digital valve is just like regular valve, but it's like on, off, on, off, on, off. So, you know, stop airflow and resume airflow that can be controlled digitally. Digitally. Is automating the assemblers a possible future project? No, not really. There's really nothing Love to do on those um, printing benches. I mean, it's possible, but I really only take projects that have not ridiculous diminishing returns. And the problem with like additional automation of, of printing here, unless you need to print thousands of something at once, um, the cost versus reward uh, isn't there. It's just not there. And if you're trying to print thousands of things at once, all you really got to do is, um, is, uh, get a stacker. Alright, so there's the digital valve. I guess I didn't print up the volume pump, but I will. Let's nab the yellow color, even though I had paint on me. All right, so I have two extra. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, that's just about done on that side. Uh, I'm not gonna add the regular pipes inside though, not yet, because I'm not ready for them. 
But here's my portable air scrubber. I don't think a portable air scrubber will get destroyed in a storm. Hopefully I don't get a storm though. Uh, it doesn't have a battery though, but I needed to free up the room in my inventory. Uh, yeah, the fabricator isn't a thing anymore, so. Uh, I do need some more liquid, I guess, but I don't want to put that, I don't want to connect the liquid pipes until this is cooled anyway. So now at this point, um, I need to do a volume pump and, um, I think what I'm going to do is design, I'm going to remove these pipes here that connect the two systems, um, so that I can design the radiator system. I can build the radiator system, uh, before I, just on this side, before I, you know, give everything the go ahead, so... Well, it would help if it was lined up with anything. So that way I can design the radiators but not actually have anything in them. Um, and I'm going to have them be a top, top and bottom radiator. Like this. So I'm going to need some more regular pipes. And I'm also going to change my, uh, my, like, uh, window portal that I use. I'm going to change it to that one so that the radiators don't block it. So now, uh, I need to print up a bunch of regular pipes and a volume pump. We're doing, uh, radiator cooling with, a uh, volume pump and digital valve instead of, um, yeah, instead of, uh, Wall coolers. We, uh, we voted on that. Well, I didn't vote, but you guys did. So the plan is to set up <clears throat> all the logic that we're going to need to cool it. Um, and then seal it at night when it's the coolest. And, uh, and also portable scrub out all the unwanted gases out of there. I only need to cut the pipe network with the digital valve to stop the cooling. Um, yeah, no, I could do it that way too. I could have two digital valves instead. Sure, I mean, why not? That's even easier. Where are my batteries? Oh, well, this one's full, but the ones up here are not. They're full-ish, but not full. All right, double digital valves. Um, then we're going to need to hold just a whole lot of pipes and radiators. My guess is I'm not going to have the gold for radiators. I have only 29 gold, so my guess is I'm going to run out of gold. The furnace ones would be full. Full blue. And then my furnace is a thousand degrees. Not using it, so I'm going to keep it off. Well, it's just print. It's uh, manufacturing pipes of the right color. All right, one more. I don't know exactly how many I need. And I'm gonna want water pipes for later as well. I know. I'm gonna first set up the cooling loop, and uh, not worry about the water pipes just yet. Good puffers.
right. Oh, right. Change the window. Uh, here we are. Well, that couldn't have been any more perfect. That's good. How many do I need? Uh, one, two. Oh God, it's really hard to tell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen radiators. All right, let's get eighteen radiators. Uh. Before I get the radiators, I know I'm going to need gold for them, so I might as well get gold. Is there just two? Oh, no, there we are. Go away, bottles. I don't need you. I don't think there's any more gold here. Dim, dim, toggle, toggle. I'm going to be really in the dark here. Let's see if I can't uh, lower the glare. I didn't, of course, have my beacon on because... What could explore knows where home is. I'm having a hard time finding gold. I also don't have my uh, other light. Not that the other light really helped at all. Look at this mountain. Silver. Okay, I'll go for some sunshine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure I don't get storms during the day on Venus. And also, um, I'd be able to see some stuff. Ah, yeah, here we go. Uranium is the secret X source. If you want a ton of uranium, uh, shove uranium into a hot furnace and set up atmospheric filter to filter out X from that. Uranium gives you tons of uh, X. And X is the best gas for uh, specific heat or thermal, uh, you know, for, for cooling purposes. So what I might do is I might um, I might set up a, a a furnace temporarily for that if we feel like we need more X in the system. We'll see if if my current setup cools well enough. If it doesn't, we can always you know add some X. Ooh, lead. I want lead. That looks like gold over there. A mountain full of gold. Midas Mountain here. And I'm getting thirsty. Ooh, I don't have a lot of time left. This is going to be, have to be another project for another night. Another stream. Surprised to no one that everything takes me a long time to do. Still don't even have Inconel or uh, 
has to lie. Not that I couldn't have. Obviously, I could have. Just this project is a big one. I've made it a big one, rather. Yeah. I, I, I do enjoy that everything in Stationers takes a long time, because if it didn't, uh, it wouldn't be meaningful. I, I do say that often, but, like, it's momentous when you get stuff done because of the time invested. You know, if it was if it was easy, it wouldn't be as meaningful. Um, so one of the advantages of, yeah, it takes forever to do anything, is it, it's a more meaningful, um, more meaningful milestone when, once it's done. So when I have, you know, oh, wow. Hello, batteries. You look full. When I have this project done, uh, what the meaningful part of this is going to be that um, I can take my helmet off. I can take my suit off. I'll be able to walk around um, in my base, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, sit in a sleeper or whatever. Is X really the best coolant? Um, yes. It is. The station PD is wrong. The station PD is never, ever, ever right. Water is the best coolant for... Water is a better coolant, yes. That part is true. Um, but another part is I don't want very, very, very cold water. Um, because... Plants? So... X is just a gas that doesn't otherwise serve a purpose, so we're gonna use it as coolant. But it is a better it is a better coolant than CO2, I'm 99% sure. Um even though the station PDA says it's water. But water is better. Uh, for heat retention, yeah. Uh where is that? I bookmarked it on um so there's a there's a, a spreadsheet bookmarked on my um Discord server that has a lot of the sort of Excel spreadsheet of, of gases and ores and reagents and stuff like that. Uh, and as far as I know, it is up to date. And the... I think it has specific heat somewhere in it. I'm looking at it now. Heat capacity of X. No, actually, the heat capacity of uh, CO2 might be better. But again, we want temperate CO2, and I don't want to run dual CO2 lines. I don't know. It's really hard to tell because everything, um, everything in the game changes, but it doesn't tend to get uh, marked down. So it's it's hard to keep track of changes that the devs have made because they don't really change a lot much uh, you'd think Europa would be cool with all the phase changes but I can tell you the phase changes don't really exist they're fake yeah I don't know when that spreadsheet was last right yeah you can use water I'm going to use X because I want to use X. Because I have a dedicated X line. At, at some at some point, uh, it doesn't really matter what is better. If it works, it works. Right? I mean, you could have a coolant line with a very inefficient gas if you wanted. If it worked, it, you know, who cares? So it says uh, February 28th is last updated. Yeah, so it's been a month, and, and in that last month, we've had a major update. We've had the Rocketeer update, so I, uh, I don't really know. If it's uh, up to date. Uh, 
Oh. Air control. Having a bit of trouble there. No, oh, these should have been yellow. So this is just about all set up for cooling, where we would want to stick a large battery in this uh, portable air scrubber and um, seal the windows at peak nighttime when it is coldest and, uh, and cool down the volume of this area with our coolers here, uh, setting up uh, logic so that when it gets to a certain temperature, it turns off the the uh, the digital valve, so there is no flow uh, from the uh, the coolant lines. Let me make another large battery for the uh, the cooler there, or the uh, the scrubber. Moderator says, can we not please listen to the moderator? <laughs> um, so the logic. So if we're talking about the logic here, uh, let me let me think of what else we need. Not that I have time to, because it's out of time. So let me make that large battery for the that last cooler there. And if uh the nuclear battery is what? Astroloy and Inconel? Yeah. Large battery. Copper, steel, gold. It's copper. Steel. Only want one, thank you. There's my battery. Oh, helps to pick it up. And the very last thing I will do is one more potato, because I am a potato. Quit pushing the buttons of the moderator, guys. <laughs> Won't end well. Oh, I like how the battery I'm sticking into the portable scrubber has more power than my own suit battery. <laughs> it's like, hmm, maybe someone should charge his suit. Just a little bit. Um. So, yeah, obviously next... Whoa, that doesn't... I fumbled that like the Olympic torch. Uh, the next stream is obviously going to have to be the time when we cool this place down with um, IC logic and with the digital valves, which is going to be pretty cool. And then uh, what we're going to be doing is 
um, just scrubbing out the N2 and X out of here. Uh, once it is cooled and scrubbed, uh, we'll be setting up... Well, I need to set up this airlock anyway, and then eventually removing this these two windows so that we can separate the two gases out from one another. And then what we'll need to do is set up a draft system to scrub the oxygen out of this room and send this oxygen um, back to the base. Meaning that, uh, yet again, see the, I have a, a gray line and a blue line. I'm gonna need yet another line. I actually don't even know how I'm gonna run the oxygen back to the base, but we'll have to figure it out. Yet another pipe. Because now our, uh, our farm is, you know, detached. And uh, looks pretty wild. Uh, I gotta say, it look, looks pretty, pretty weird. Thank you for watching Stationer's Venus, which originally aired live on Twitch. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. Keep in mind that the series has since ended. But with that said, there's still many hours left yet to air. If you would like to catch live streams of mine, I'm no longer streaming Stationeers, but my stream schedule can be found at Rodamon.com or my schedule banner. Thank you so very much for watching. I'll catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell.